It's been a century since the Sykes-Picot Accord was ratified on the 16th of May, 1916. This was a secret agreement between Great Britain, France and Tsarist Russia that would have a profound impact on the history of the Middle East. Even today, in the era of the horrifying rise of ISIS, members of that group speak of reversing the effects of Sykes-Picot. But how exactly did it play out? And what impact does this agreement still have on the region today? In 1915, the once mighty Ottoman Empire was clearly in its final days. European nations, still caught right in the heart of World War I, were planning how this crumbling relic would soon be carved up. In steps Sir Mark Sykes, a debonair British soldier turned politician, nicknamed the Mad Muller by some of his contemporaries for his extensive travel and love of the Ottoman world. He was summoned by then Prime Minister Herbert Asquith, who had only recently suffered a nervous breakdown from which he was still recovering. In this admittedly difficult meeting, Sykes was tasked with negotiating a deal with the only other powerful player in the region, France. His proposed strategy had won over not only Asquith, but also David Lloyd George, Arthur Balfour, and Lord Kitchener, who not only wanted Britons to join the army in his famous and much imitated poster, but who also hated the Turks and wanted Britons to expand their empire into Turkish territory. Sykes' counterpart in negotiations would be François-Georges Picot, a Parisian lawyer and diplomat, and a specialist in Syrian affairs. The two men argued on behalf of their nation's interests and eventually settled on a dividing line drawn up by Sykes himself that went from the port of Acre on the Mediterranean Sea to Kirkuk, a city close to the Persian border. North of this dividing line would fall under the French sphere of influence, including modern-day Syria and Lebanon. South of the line would be under the British sphere of influence, including Jordan and most of Iraq. Palestine, as always, would continue to be argued over. Russia was brought into the talks and it was agreed that Istanbul and the surrounding waterways, along with Armenia, would be placed under Russian control once the war was over. And so a new map was drawn in place of the Ottoman Empire, and in so doing, most of the modern-day border between Iraq and Syria was formed. If indeed that border can still be said to exist, given the Syrian civil war and the rise of ISIS. Of course, this business was never meant to be seen by the public. However, nobody expected the Russian Revolution. The new communist government led by Lenin discovered the Sykes-Picot agreement that had been made under the Tsar's rule and published it to the world just a month after coming into power. It was first printed in English by the Manchester Guardian. It's safe to say that many people were dismayed by the revelation of this secret arrangement, especially the Arabs, who had been promised an independent state in their dealings with Lawrence of Arabia. Sykes-Picot revealed that this would certainly not be the case. Much has changed ever since the agreement was made public, but it's hard to predict how the borders will change in the future from the ones drawn up a century ago.